Hello guys, this is Arun. In this talk, I'm gonna talk about the best and recommended practices to start building containers. Let's go ahead. All right, so this is my terminal and I've got my Docker client and server installed. So if I want to spin up a container, so what I, can I do is docker run hyphen dit, then I could give the name of the container and then the image name, which is stdvd. So in this case, I'm gonna start Apache container. All right, so the container is up and running and in, let's validate that. Docker inspect web. And if I do a grab of IP AD, I could get the IP address of this container. And if I do a curl over it, it says 200, so which means the container is totally working fine. But here there are a few gotchas. If I want to see what exactly are the privileges attached to this container, I could always use PSCAP, which is a part of libngutils and can be installed with the help of apt-cat. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna see the capabilities attached to this container Apache. All right, so these are the capabilities attached to this HTTPD container by default. And these privileges are coming by default. Okay, but do I really think that I need all these capabilities? No, not at all. All right, so what if I drop each and every uh, capabilities added to this container? All right, but before that, I would like to give you a brief about the Linux capabilities. So basically for a process, as the container is a process, and in order to do something or achieve something with the help of kernel, a process has to have few privileges attached to it so that it can talk to the kernel via system call and can use the specific uh, functionalities of the kernel with that attached privileges. So this is all about the Linux privileges. All right, so let's build a container with no privileges. So what I could do is cap drop equals to all. So this is the flag which is coming out of the box from the Docker and can be leveraged to drop each and everything coming by default for a container all right so i'm gonna give a different name to this container let's say web01 and i'm gonna use the same image all right so it says the container is up okay let's see docker ps okay i could see only one container and if i do docker ps hyphen a so you could see there is a container which just got exited all right so this was the container which got exited as you could see this is the hash id of that container which we spawn with no capabilities basically by dropping all the capabilities all right so in order to see what exactly has happened with that container we could always say docker logs and the hash id of uh, the container basically or the container id or the name of the container all right so if i see here there is an error which says could not bind to this address 000, 000 colon 80 so basically apache leverage this port and this container basically is not able to bind to this address basically to this socket and why exactly is that happening because we have dropped each and everything and and the capability uh, basically the privileges uh, for this container to bind to any of the address was coming with some of the privileges from here and in order to tell you this was the privileges uh, this was the exact privilege which allow a process or basically a container to bind itself to a certain port or a address and as we could see we have dropped each and everything so that's why this error all right so now i have dropped each and everything 
and on the contrary i could have these many capabilities attached to my container by default so how could i know what exactly do i need in order to spin up a container with the minimal privileges or minimal capabilities all right so for that there is a utility system tab which has been introduced by red hat and which can be used to trace system call process thread or memory allocation all right so here we're gonna trace this process basically all right so yep so i have kept each and everything in a documentation over github so that it could be accessible to each and everybody after this talk all right okay so this is how uh, you could trace a process basically there is a steepy script you have to write and these steepy script uh, basically uh, there are certain examples given on the red hat site which i have documented here in my documentation here here okay so you could always use a script and all we need to trace is a process which is user has been httpd and if you go down it would give you the std out and later at some point it would give the capabilities which are being used by this process so if you could see httpd process is using the capability set gid set uid and net bind service basically for binding itself to a certain port or an address so basically we need these three capabilities nothing else if we compare to a list of capabilities which are getting added by default all right so what if i start a container with only these capabilities let's see docker run hyphen dit i'm gonna say a name web 02 and i could see httpd but before that i would say cap drop equals to all okay start with uh, dropping each and everything and then add one by one set uid hyphen hyphen cap add equals to set gid and cap add what was that net bind service net underscore bind underscore service okay so it says container is up and running let's see okay so web 02 is up and running with this container id let's see docker inspect what is that web 02 and grab for the ip ad okay so this is the ip address for that container and if i do curl i could see that my container is up and running and if you do a ps cap of sttpd you can see two containers side by side so this is the one which we just spin up which is web 02 with minimal capabilities and the first the initial one with the default capabilities so now you could decide what exactly would be the recommended way for your service basically to get a container up and running with the minimal capabilities attached to it so that you know if in case there are vulnerabilities in your container at least there are minimal privileges and nobody could escape out of your container all right so this is all about you know privileges and yep the next thing i'm gonna talk about c group and after that namespaces all right so i have kept each and everything on the documentation so i would need to go to that to see what exactly is there on that page all right so we are gonna see the c groups okay so for that let's start a simple container first i'm gonna copy paste uh, the whole command 
in order to save the time as i've got a minimal time here all right so my container is up and running and i am into the container shell all right but before that i would want to see what exactly is the amount of uh, memory attached to this container or basically the amount of memory allocated to this particular container all right so how can i how could i see that cat sys fsc group then docker c groups memory then docker then basically the container id okay container id and then memory and memory limits in byte okay so this is the number in bytes as you could see the name of the file is in bytes so this is a number in bytes which is allocated to this container here and i'm sure this giant number is something which my machine you know would not be having so if i do free hyphen mh my machine is only having 15 gb of ram and i'm sure this giant number is all the way beyond this 15 gb all right so do you really think that uh, your container would be needing that much of memory for sure not if this is not the case that you are going to run a single container on a bare metal machine which is unlikely the case all right so i have got this uh, memory and let's see if i could leverage or use any of this memory so what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna start two worker which would use 250 mb of ram with within five, five seconds all right so i'm dispatching the hoax and you could see so basically this is a, a stress test which we are going to do all right so it says this container can use 250 mb of ram with two process or two worker running side by side for a time out of five seconds okay what after that let's see if i'm able to do that same for 500 mb okay i'm sure that it would be able to do that okay yep yeah. successful run complete and it would do until i'm getting out of this number which i really don't want at any cost okay so is there any way i could uh, limit or i could give the threshold or the upper limit on the amount of ram which can be allocated to a container oh yes there is a way and uh, docker provide provides that out of the box all right what exactly is that let's see on the recommendation okay so you can always say okay i need only 10 mb of ram that's it this is the flag you need to give let's see okay i'm in the shell of the container and let's try to run the same stress test which we ran here but here i'm gonna do with 50 let's say so it says failed okay what about 12 it says failed what about something under 10 let's say 8 so it says successful so as you could see the 8 mb is under the limit which we have given which is 10 mb all right so the stress test is failing if these two workers basically are using more than 10 mb of ram together so the test is failing but if it is within the limit so they are getting the test successful so that's how you can limit the amount of ram being allocated to a container basically marking a threshold on the memory so same way you can do it for disk network or io so this example i have shown only for uh, memory so let's go back to the recommendation and see what exactly we have okay so the next thing is namespaces all right 
So let's run a simple container here. Okay, so my container is up and running and basically the Alpine container. And if I go here, Docker exec hyphen IT, this is the container ID. And if I attach a pen bash, okay, so bash is not there, let's say shell. Okay, and if I do PS EF, so you could see the sleep command, which I have given as the argument is running as a net process with PID one and as a user root. But what if I go to the host and do PS hyphen EF crap of sleep. So as you could see, this is the exact same command here and it is running with the process ID 8420 and with the user root. So that's how whatever you are seeing inside a container which is running as the init process is running with some other user id on the host level so that's how the mapping of the user id is being done in a docker container all right so let's uh, let's run a mariadb container here and see okay MariaDB, so MariaDB is up and running. And if I would want to go into this docker exec hyphen it and pen bash. Okay, I'm inside the container and if I do PSAUXWW, you could see the MySQL D daemon is running as the init process with MySQL user. Okay, if I do ID MySQL, it says the ID of the MySQL is triple line here on this inside the container okay so if i go on the host and if i do ps hyphen ef crap of um, mysql okay nothing is in here mysql okay so here's the daemon mysql d running the same daemon which is running inside the container but on the host it is running with some other user id and the user which is accountable for this process is MFE. It is not the one which is here, which is MySQL. And for MySQL or MariaDB, the user which is the control user for this process should be MySQL in any case. And I really don't want any other user to be the control user of my MySQL daemon. And what exactly is this? MFE here. So let's see get it is pass WD and grab uh, 999. Okay, so as you could see here, so the ID of the MySQL inside the container was triple nine and on the host, the triple nine ID has been taken by some other user, which is MFE. So I have been running McAfee, uh, McAfee services on the host and this is the user which is responsible for taking care of those services and the MySQL process is attached to this user at the host level and this is something which could have the consequences in near future. So in order to to overcome these type of problem, what you could do is you could do a certain modification in your Docker file. So what exactly are those? Let's see here. So either you could say a group add MySQL and then user add MySQL. But here with this, you would see the problem which we are seeing here. So instead of that, you could say group add with group ID then the then give the mysql name and then user read with user id for mysql but this is the short term solution which you have to do everywhere in your docker file or everywhere in the code wherever you are spinning up a mysql or a MySQL, mariadb container so what exactly is the long term solution so there is a user namespace which is which has been introduced by docker and it's still in the experimental phase but I have explored it and it is working quite nice. So let's see how exactly that is going to work. 
So the long term solution would be to start the Docker daemon itself in some other namespace. So let's let's say we want to start the Docker daemon in a swappy namespace. So for that we should have a user with the name swappy and group already present. Okay, so we have got the user and group for the same and when we are going to instruct the docker daemon to start in this swappy namespace we would need the subordinate uid okay so we have defined here for this user the subordinate uid range which is 1655 and the next set of integer for this user. So whenever the Docker daemon is running in this swappy namespace, it would start using the UID of this range. Unless uh, like earlier, which was triple nine. And same way we would need subordinate GID for swappy. The same thing. And after assigning the subordinate UID and subordinate GID for uh, the namespace wherein you want to run the Docker, you would want to instruct the Docker daemon as well. Okay, for that, Docker daemon dot JSON, you have to say you have to remap yourself in the namespace which is swappy, and then you could always start the Docker daemon. Okay, so we have restarted the Docker daemon after instructing the Docker daemon that we have to run in swappy namespace. And let's try to see if we are able to run the MySQL. Okay, so it says MariaDB is not here locally. All right, fine. And it is trying to uh, pull the images or basically the layers for that image. I'll take a bit. Okay, so our container is up and running. Let's try to get into that container docker exec hyphen it pen bash. Okay, I'm inside the container. And if I do psa xww, you could say the MySQL daemon is running with the user MySQL and with process ID one, which is an initialization process. and if I go here and if I do ps, ef, and grep of mysql d, 